Okay guys, welcome to uh, Let's Play of the new and updated and improved System Shock demo. Uh, I'm getting the impression that this might be the last demo we get, but I don't know for sure. Um, it literally just dropped today. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to check it out. I love this new Night Dive intro as well. I, I just love Night Dive Studios. Uh, ever since they started, I've loved these guys. But, um... Yeah, so what happened was uh, I was browsing Steam and I saw System Shock, the new one, the remake, available for, well, I saw a price. It was forty four ninety nine, and I was just like, huh? What? It's out? And I got really excited, but I clicked on the page and it just said pre-order. Um, but then I was looking through the news, I checked out uh, Night Dive's Twitter, and then they said they have a new updated, and it's not for Kickstarter backers only, it's a new updated demo i tooled or you know full disclosure i tooled around it a little bit to make sure it was different it is and uh, i wanted to do a little let's play on this channel so you guys know how i roll here um so oh yeah the demo contains placeholder content and visuals um we'll be getting into that in a second here um i like this uh screen it's really reminiscent of uh, alien isolation And, you know, parts of the soundtrack are reminiscent of, of Prey, which I'm a little bummed out about. I do like the sort of old-school techno, you know, 90s industrial techno soundtrack that the original had, but it's a little too upbeat for the, the horror atmosphere. So, uh, and we're just going to get into, into this in a second, but just give me one second. I do want to make sure that the recording is working perfect. Sorry, let me go back, guys. Just gonna tab into it, just make sure. Okay, we do have a timestamp. I'm happy with that. All right, so I was wondering when they were gonna add this kind of stuff in, because the last demo I was just like, oh, uh, is this it? I mean, not that I was complaining. I mean, I really liked what they were doing with the game thus far, but I was like, well, you are missing some, some features. This is actually one of the most uh, unique and original features that the System Shock the original System Shock had that hasn't really been replicated that often in games. I can't think of anything on the top of my head, but I'm sure somebody in the comments uh, will probably know of something. But basically, here's the thing. You can customize your difficulty beyond just easy, medium, or hard. You know, let's say that you're really like an adventure game guy and you like puzzles and stuff. Um, you know, but... You know, you're not really here for the combat. Like, honestly, I would, you know, and I, I'm gonna sound like a, like a, in, uh, uh, basic bitch gamer here by saying this, but it's true. Uh, there are games like Outlast, um, or even Amnesia to some extent, where, you know, I'm more interested in the horror atmosphere than I am the, uh, the being chased by monsters. You know, I, I actually, believe it or not, prefer the games that are a little bit more like just walking simulators with lots of horror set pieces, like visuals, like basically a haunted house. You know, I really liked um, Layers of Fear. Layers of Fear was great. And and there are some sections where you have to avoid a monster, but it's never a game breaking. There's no uh, fail states because of it. I think Soma was a game that really compromised with that well. Uh, additionally, but anyways, before I tangent, <laughs> before I get into too much of a tangent, um, so you could say, hey, you know what, I'm going to turn the combat down to easy. Or if I'm just, I'm here for the shooting, you could say like, I don't give a shit about puzzles. I don't know what cyber is. So I just want, I just want a hardcore sort of survival, sh you know, horror shooting experience. Um, the mission, this, uh, increases the amount of objectives that you have to do. Um, and in the original System Shock, if you pushed it up to, uh, I think it was labeled story, not mission. Um, if you pushed it all the way up to hard, and I think there was zero through three or zero through four in the original System Shock, but if you push it up to hard, there was a, a, a hard time limit on the entire game. Um, so that's really one of the most unique things that System Shock did. Now, you know, again, I'm such a basic bitch gamer. I usually just put everything in medium. Um, but, you know, like I said, you know, if you're just not a person who cares about the little uh, mini game puzzles, um, or if you played it, you, you got a certain ways through the game and you just thought cyberspace was just uh, horrendous, you could be like, I'm just turning that to easy so I can just get through them. Um, so I really like the return of this feature. And I gotta say, the combat in this game, like, combat in the original System Shock is not too bad. Um, and with the resurrection chambers, as long as you're strategic about 
when you activate them and and how you manage your resources it's not too bad but this game you know just tooling around with it the last two times i played it has had me thinking like do i want to bump this down now i'm not going to for you guys because i don't want to i don't want to out myself as that much of a new i'm not i just um i was just surprised because i was so comfortable with the original system shock playing it you know probably almost two times now i've played through it um that I, you know, I'm a little, you know, this this game takes actual skill. The, the original System Shock doesn't take a ton of skill. It's more, as people have pointed out, a thinking man's shooter. Um, but without further ado, let's jump into it. Much more of an alien style intro. Again, if you can hear the soundtrack too, it's more sort of like a soundscape rather than... Which, I gotta say personally, I don't necessarily agree with. But if you are going to try and make this game more of a horror-based um, experience, then yeah, I can understand why you would have foregone the original soundtrack. But, you know, if Night Dive... And, and we're going to get into some of this. If Night Dive is really smart, what they'll do is let you completely customize your experience with the game. There we go. Um, oh, and the other cool thing is I had the demo installed already from the last time I played it, so I think some of my settings, yeah, like I had the plasma color picked out for my HUD. So it's booting up with plasma. And I like the, the 28.1 gigahertz processor. Uh, serial ports AC97, looking glass uh, optic nerve. I love that. And I love the return to the original art style here. Um, the one thing that's bothering me, if you go up real close, everything's super pixelated. If that was a deliberate art choice design, I'm thinking, like, why? Because, yeah, while some of this this art design, you know, that's reminiscent of the original, looks a little bit silly, you know, compared to modern day stuff. All the lighting effects and some of the texture work is so good, and, and, and like, look at these shadows and there's dynamic light sources and stuff. It's like, well, why the hell would you make everything else so realistic looking, you know, with Unreal 4, but then keep this, like, sort of, like, hokey, um, DOS-esque, you know, texture scheme. I'm hoping that's right now what they're doing for the demo is that's an optimization thing that's what i'm hoping to make sure that everyone has a nice uh high frame rate when they're playing um and i'm hoping that changes in the original they did say the visuals were largely placeholder so um, and you'll see when we get up close to things like look at the look at that and again it i don't think that this particular these visuals lend themselves to pixel art you know the original game used pixel art because that's what they had to do and if you're going to pay homage to that, I just think it's silly. Like, the art style, I think it looks good without going pixelated. And again, from afar, it does. it's not. It's not pixel art, and up close it is. So I'm hoping that it, the final release isn't going to look like this. Like, look, that looks terrible up close. And it's like, okay, if that's placeholder texture work for optimization, I'm fine with that. But if the, this is what the final release is going to look like, I'm a, I'm a bit concerned. Like, that looks terrible. This mug looks terrible. And I was just remarking to myself earlier, are these supposed to be octagonal, like, because it's futuristic, or is this just the low geometry count for that model? And it's, it's little things like that, that I'm like, huh? Eh? And I just don't like all the pixelation. You know. Oh, these PDAs don't actually do anything. Okay, let's pick up scalpels. No, we're done here. We don't need anything else. So, anyways, what I was saying earlier is that, yeah, that, that original soundtrack, like, the, what I've noticed is the soundtrack they have now, it's not even, like, mo like, playing off motifs from the soundtrack from the original. It's just sort of generic, creepy space station video game soundtrack, you know? So... Um, if Night Dive was really smart, what they would do is allow you to customize the experience and say, like, you know what? I want to play it with the original soundtrack. 
you know and if they're gonna go with this pixely art style I think they would let you customize it to be like alright do you want the graphics to look more realistic or do you want like the pixel art um, like I would love to be able to play this with the original soundtrack and I can't believe they didn't do a, a remix of it which kinda bugs me so um, but we'll see I mean the game is it's it's still what it's coming out I think they said maybe June or July so we've got four or five months till it's out uh, so, something in, in that time frame so a lot can happen in that time um, and they changed a lot of things for the better but uh, I yeah I, I just if they were smart they'd allow you to completely much like the difficulty completely customize it like you want to play the new reimagining of System Shock 1 play that if you if you don't then you get to play um, you get to play with the OG soundtrack So that's the map, which I hardly use. We get to monitor the stash, uh, monitor the status of station systems. Displays the user's health status. So this is this is cooler because it's kind of explaining like why you need all these cybernetic, you know, augments and inputs and stuff like that, to make it feel like your character. Because you're that's the other thing that was cool about this being an immersive sim in the original is that your your everything on your HUD, the compass, the map, the health, the energy, the inventory, that's all part of your augments. That's how they so they there was an in universe explanation for it versus like Ultima Underworld where it's like just a separate screen for no reason. This is my data log thing. guys I've got the coof no I don't well I don't know I actually don't know I have no idea but uh, I don't think I do I'm, I'm largely asymptomatic but anytime I cough I feel the need to reference that okay so there's another thing uh, obviously that's not the original voice actor which okay fine it's not like that stuff was stellar but it's so iconic to the game and if I'm not mistaken, they changed the script up too. They didn't just change the voice acting; they changed the script entirely. Because I'm pretty sure she rec uh, referenced Shodan at that point in this uh, thus far in the game. So it's not even the same audio logs, which again sort of begs the question: Is there going to be a classic mode where you get to play with the original audio logs, that kind of stuff? I would also like a block button um, in the game. That would be nice. Shodan has locked down the elevators. Mira says if we can lower the security on the level, we'll be able to gain access to restricted areas and get the lifts moving again. She says smashing cameras and taking the medical CPU nodes offline will help, but I don't want to. Okay. Um, I think that one was the original uh, log entry. I can't. I can't remember for sure. Also, these are way too small. Um, I do like that little animation for reading it, though. But uh, just in case I wake up and I overhear that a security squad is on their way, the door code to the exit surgery suite to exit the surgery suite is four five point. I think that window's a little small. Um, 
Again, these are all little tiny things that can be fixed. And if you guys think I'm being overly critical, I'm not. I'm absolutely in love with this game. I think it's a fantastic um, remake uh, thus far. I also love the return to the original art style. I love the transparency with uh, uh, Night Dive and, and the, the community. Um, if I'm saying any of this, it's, it's just to voice my opinion on things that... Little tiny things that I would like to see changed or features I would like. Um, you know, to any fans out there, and, and potentially even Night Dive. Yeah, this this glass work is uh, definitely, hopefully, placeholder. Like, the inside of this thing looks terrible. From a first-person perspective. You know, from far away, it looks pretty good, though. Alright, I'm gonna turn it back down. I'm in trouble hearing myself over all the sound effects. I love the lighting, though. Unreal 4. I mean, I always been a have been a big fan of the Unreal Engine. Ever since, two, well, 2.5, which, if you guys check out my new Let's Play Thief Deadly Shadows, you're going to hear all about. Um, I think I also mention it in my, uh, my Immersive Sim uh, series, where I list all the Immersive Sims. I probably need to update that because there's a bunch coming out soon. So, unfortunately, uh, once again, I'm going to be a base build. Sorry. I forgot. It doesn't zoom you into the pad, which I kind of like, actually. Again, sticking with that sort of immersive sim design philosophy. Damn. Let's pack a punch. Do you have... No, he's got nothing. Um, that you just have to, you know, you use your little interface here to interact with it. Almost as if you're, like, controlling buttons and stuff like that with your mind, that's kind of cool. Um, which kind of fits the sort of Welcome cyberpunk theme. to Citadel Station. We hope your somnolent healing stage went well. Today is the sixth day of November, year 2072. Y you are currently in the healing suites, located on the first level. Level two contains the research laboratories. Three houses the Department of Maintenance, and the storage cells are on level four. The flight deck is on level five. Le le level six holds crew facilities and executive suites, and level seven is system engineering. Level eight houses the Department of Security. The bridge is located on level nine, and energy systems on level R. All levels can be accessed by the elevator in, in, in Alpha Quadrant. We hope you have a pleasant stay on Citadel Station. So yeah, since I actually haven't done a Let's Play of this demo yet, I'm going to talk about some stuff here. Um, I love the pistol. I love the look of it. And yeah, there's no iron sights, which I'm actually okay with. I think there was in the last... I can't remember if there were or not in the last build. Um, but I this actually plays a bit more like System Shock 2, it, just in the controls, but with all the features of System Shock 1. So you just tab to get in your inventory, which you could... Well, tab in System Shock 1 gave you just free with mouse control, um, but you could still do stuff on screen. Um, but, uh, yeah, I like that, again, you know, in sort of the complete sort of customization and making it more of an RPG, more of an immersive sim, uh, a complete customization of your inventory. You have an inventory space here. I would like to see uh, a, a mod that allows you to expand this. That would be great. Uh, and you install the mods here. And uh, actually, if you could see, uh, so F1, if I press F1, it actually turns off my um, biological systems monitor. Um, and I, this basically just kind of tells you like how your health's doing, how your stamina is doing. Now there's this thing here, there's a, a uh, stam up, stamina up stimulant, this is a booster, and uh, I've never had an issue with stamina before, but I would imagine that you, you can't swing your, your pipe if you run out of stamina, or you can't run, so it may be something that you want to use, but I've never really had an issue with it, even in the original System Shock, so I never really use these. Um, but this Berserk Combat Booster, especially in this game, because, yeah and F6. Oops, sorry, it's getting dark in here. Let me turn on my lamp. If 
fight. That so you can toggle all the elements of your HUD, but again, there's an in-universe explanation for them. These are the the mods you have installed, and these are the slots that you can. Um, this is part of your interface that you had surgically implanted. Um, the Berserk Booster is great because uh, if you need to use your melee weapon, you can conserve resources like ammo and stuff, and do I think double or triple damage with your melee weapons um, against enemies. So it's a you know, and this is where some of the sort of RPG elements come in, you know. I, I think I was listening to the Looking Glass podcast, and they discussed that, um, you know, people have debated over the years whether this is an RPG or not. But again, it's, they just drop you into this world, they don't tell you where to go, and they just give you some tools. I didn't even, like, that wasn't, it's not like Half-Life where I have to pick up that pistol, or like a, a military shooter where I'm just issued that at the beginning. Like, I can either choose to pick it up or not. Um, I just happen to pick it up, and I can choose to have it in my, you know, uh, quick slots or not, you know, maybe it just floats around my inventory. Um, so I pick what weapons I use, I pick my play style, the addition of combat boosters and stuff like that allows me to have a different play style. I can load my inventory up with junk and manipulate objects in the environment if I want to. Um, and they kind of likened it to Zelda where... You know, your progression isn't really locked behind your, your character's stats. It's locked behind uh, the different equipment and augments and, and resources that you find in the environment. You know, and you can even have a play style. If you want to just, uh, if you want to go full melee, you can load yourself up with health stims and um, berserker combat boosters. And just whack everything to death with your pipe if you want to. If you want to play it more like a shooter, you can do that, and you just got to focus on conserving ammunition. Um, and of course, this compared to the uh, the original game is a much more of a of a survival horror game because of the limited resources and the fact that the gameplay is actually somewhat difficult now. Also love if you've played the original game these rooms look a little funky you're like okay but I love that there's all this gold foil it gives it that real like sort of space age look you know like this is really a space station and then of course if you go back and play the original all these textures and, and the look is totally reminiscent of how the original game looks so I love that these are the puzzles they're talking about there's quite a few of these in the game and the complexity of them is going to be determined by and these are all randomized too, because I played this earlier, and this is a totally different um, combo uh, than I used last time. So there's sort of little logic puzzles, which I, you know, they're they're cool. But again, you can customize your your difficulty. You don't have to play them the way the game says. So, yeah. This just powers on the elevator here. They showcase quite a few new enemies this time too, like this little bastard. Actually quite hard to kill. And he does a decent amount of damage. And also, I can't really tell how my stamina is doing. I wonder if I just run out of stamina at some point. Another thing that they did was, um, so in the original two, two or three renditions of this, they pretty much, well especially the more recent one, it's pretty much a one-to-one -one recreation of the game. And I feel like they were like, all right, we've got our art style and our assets down. Let's let's try and make it one to one. But now when you play it, it's um, they've they've tweaked the level design just a skosh um, to kind of make it their own or make it more logical. Um, you know how they how they would see it as more of a logical layout. But yeah, this this being, you know, the free mouse manipulation of your inventory and switching in and out of that, that's really more System Shock too. but with System Shock Enhanced Edition, that's just kind of how Enhanced Edition plays, to be honest. They added a crouch jump. I don't remember having to do that before. 
So it's a it works exactly like Half Life's does. And if I'm not mistaken, there was a dude in here. You have to like you actually have to aim. Look at that. Well, that's just uh, that's it for me. I'll never finish this game if I'm actually going to be required to aim. Look at this light. This this just looks amazing. And it runs like a dream, although my, my system's pretty beefy now. The last time I tried to play this, I had a, uh, I was doing it on my old laptop, and I could get a pretty decent frame rate, but I couldn't pump the graphics up to maximum, and it was screaming the whole time. I mean, my laptop was. I mean, I'm surprised, uh, I didn't have total meltdown and have just a, a piece of slag where my CPU used to be. You know, a Chernobyl-style incident in my room. So yeah, this wasn't in the original game, and it wasn't in the last two demos. Um, so they kind of changed it to make it, you know, it's more interesting. And I gotta say, as someone who's pretty familiar with the original game, um, I kind of like some of these changes. So I'm gonna go ahead and... Another thing that they added to the demo now is you can actually save! Thank God, because I think that's another reason I was very tempted to, to turn the combat down. Not being able to save in the previous demo was kind of a big pain in the ass because until you hit that cyborg uh, reclamation chamber and unlocked it you uh, it was kind of like a roguelike you just had to start up look I love all these volumetric uh, it's like there's mist or fog or just dust or something I'm give this pistol a little oh this is beautiful and we've come a long way, too, I remember. Um, man, I think even Total Biscuit checked out one of the original builds. Um, I'm kind of bummed out I didn't get to be a backer. Um, I, and I don't know if it's been open this whole time, you know, with all these perks and stuff. I have no idea. Or if it, you know, I'm going to go check it out. It might still be open. I'd love to back this, but... Um, I guess I was in the, either I was broke or I was under the impression that um, I uh, uh, backing was closed. Also, of course, the lean, which again is in the original, but there, you have a lot more control over how you lean. It's just a pain in the ass to actually manipulate the controls, so you almost never use it. Well, I wouldn't say almost, but the crouching and things that you never use that. I see you over there. I'm trying to get headshots to conserve ammo here. And one for you. I'm pretty sure there's another monstrosity. Oh, maybe not. Like I said, it's it's kind of nice that they've changed up the level design. Just a skosh. They've made it their own without betraying the, the general layout of the game, and it's a nice little welcome surprise. It's, it kind of reminds me of when I kept replaying the different builds of uh, uh, Underworld Ascendant, you know? Uh, when you've played it that many times, you kind of get sick of the... the layout, and uh, it's nice when they change just little things. Oh, I don't want that battery pack there. I'm reserving that for the, the spark pistol. Which, by the way, did I miss that already? I'm gonna have to backtrack. Yeah, there's no prescribed way through getting through this level. You just explore and deal with the obstacles as they arise. I have no idea what... Oh, that just opens the door down there. Okay. Oh, let's check it out. I'm pretty sure it's uh, radioactive down here, yeah. I, I think this room, I think I just need to keep reminding myself there, well, except for these grenades, there's almost nothing of value in here. It's almost not worth dying of radiation poisoning. 
But I gotta say that I think this game really, for me, sells more of the immersive sim roots of it. You know, the original game, because of the antiquated sort of control scheme, um, you know, this is a much more immersive experience. I don't know if you guys can hear that soundtrack. It's really reminding me of Prey. Um, it's gonna go ahead and... Oh, another smart thing that they did, which really pissed me off. Well, we're gonna test that theory right now. Yes, you can actually hold grenades now. In the previous build, if you just selected it in your inventory, you would just launch it immediately, which made it kind of a pain in the ass to use, so... <clears throat> All right. Ah. Damn, he's a feisty little bugger. There we go. I just spent all my ammo, I and mean, you weren't even worth it. And I just love how fluidly everything controls. And again, if you're if you're used to playing System Shock 2 or even the original System Shock, you're gonna feel right at home here, and that's how a good remake should feel. It should offer enough new things, you know, in terms of uh, visuals and stuff, so that you're not, you know, that it's it's a it is its own new experience. It kind of updates things, but. Um, it should feel, you know, and this feels like System Shock, you know, except for the soundtrack. I do miss my, my thumping, you know, 8-bit, I don't know if it's 8-bit, but, uh, really low, uh, quality, you know, industrial techno. I'm, I'm, I'm craving it. I need it. Like I said, if they're smart, they'll, they'll put that as, like, classic mode or something. That is the Cyborg Reclamation Chamber. And I wish you could get into there through here. I, th I feel like if this were a game designed maybe a couple years later by Looking Glass Studios, they would have absolutely allowed you to do that. And I don't, um, here's another thing I'm not sure about. One, one big gripe I have about the original is that um, you can't clear levels out. The, the game constantly respawns enemies based on certain criteria. And I'm not sure if... Uh, I, I'm not... I, I want to say the last time I played this demo, that wasn't the case. But I also remember being stuck and uh, having like just a ton of enemies to deal with. And, and thinking like, man, without that reclamation chamber, I'm screwed, you know? So. Okay, well we cleared that section of the this floor out, so we're gonna go ahead and save again. And you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and Surprised they didn't call any more of them into me. On to me. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you the combat booster. So this is largely how they worked in the original game, and they they kind of made you have this sort of psychotropic trip. Another thing that I, I really like is there's dismemberment now. I think there's another one down here. Come on, let's rock. Well, there's another one in here, so let's just take care of them. These lap another smart choice that their design choice that they made was they they made these last quite a bit. I'm getting the hell out of here. Oh god. Leave me alone, leave me alone. Oh yeah, I better heal up. Shit. Oh my god, they are in pursuit. Oh 
wore off right at the worst possible moment. <laughs> Look at this guy. Well, that's fun. Uh, yeah, there's dismemberment now. Now, unfortunately, I don't think you can dismember bodies. Let's keep trying it. Oh, yeah, you can. So, you can dismember bodies. So, yeah, if you hit them in the arm during combat, you can dismember them. Um, they're adding in cool little things like that. You can decapitate them. Blow up their head. Nice little blood. It's like really cool things like that. I'm to try to get to the robot. No, that makes sense. this. I think it's time for me to drink some soda. And I don't know why I'm not, if I'm going to be drinking it. I'm not just, because that's the other thing. That, again, sort of realistic. If you consume soda, you know. Again, this has immersive sim RPG roots. This was made by Looking Glass Studios. Uh, Warren Spector was, I think, one of the design leads. You know, this is, it was meant to feel like a real sort of experience. Uh, a role-playing game in the sense that you're just taking on the role of this hacker and they just drop you in there and just like, okay, you know, tell your own story, at least in terms of your gameplay. How are you gonna do this? So yeah, if you drink a soda can, what are you left with? Empty soda can in your inventory. So if you need to drink soda and it's in someone else's inventory, just drink it there and don't, don't drag it into yours because then you got empty cans to deal with. Little things like, oh, there's another thing I might show you later that's pretty cool. Well, I'll just tell you about it. If you find a weapon, an extra weapon, and it has ammo and you just want the ammo, you can drag it in your inventory and then just empty the ammo into your inventory and then drop the weapon. So you don't have to be carrying around, you know. But the fact that you have to unload weapons that you find again. Oh, another thing I like is that the light shifts because this station is rotating. So this room is illuminated by sunlight earlier. And now the lighting has uh, completely shifted. Although I think it's a little broken here. This looks like sunlight. But, you know, they'll fix it, I'm sure. Um, all these little details that are just super cool. Again, reminiscent of Prey. And, you know, I'm fully aware of Prey's uh, influences. Now, is this one working? Broken beyond repair. Damn it. Yeah, I think we might have to go back. I found it way earlier. See, you can just use it from that. You also get the option to vaporize stuff in your inventory. I really don't know why you wouldn't just drop it. That's the one I just... Nope. Broken beyond repair. Okay. Um, I found something that kind of intrigues me uh, earlier in the game. Or when I was checking out the demo. Uh, you can find coins, and it says usable at a tri optimum vending machine. As far as I remember, there are no vending machines in uh, System Shock 1. letting you guys listen to the audio logs if you like. I'll wait to pick up this one because I'm going to take up these guys in this next room. Um, but there are no vending machines in System Shock 1. There are in System Shock 2 and I was thinking, you know what? It's not a bad idea with such a resource limited game, sort of survival horror-y, to uh, put some vending machines in this game. And I'm wondering if you have the option to vaporize if you can't use the the junk you get from vaporizing stuff. I'm kind of wondering now if you can't use that for uh let's just snipe this guy here. Nice. I'm just wondering if you can't use that for uh resources later on if you can sort of recycle or convert things. Because there is a recycler in um Is it cool? 
there is a recycler in System Shock 2, which if you can find it, or I think you, I don't know if you build it or buy it or find it, but if you can do any one of those things and obtain it, um, it's super useful because it just gives you nanites for whatever. So you can literally just, all this crap you see here, like stethoscopes and that's actually, I thought it was a thermos, it's a stethoscope container. Um, is this it? Yes. Nice. I also like, yeah, they kept that you can change the beam intensity. In the original System Shock, it's a gradient, so you have a lot more control over how much power you're diverting to it, but let's be realistic. All you really are going to set it to is somewhere in the low range, somewhere in the medium range, or somewhere in the high range, so they just kind of streamlined that. I think that's a good example of something. It's cool to have the gradient, but it's just better to, to streamline it. And I like when it's on the super high setting, it starts freaking out. Now, this one's really cool. It will one-shot a lot of enemies, but uh, it, it has a cooldown, kind of like a Halo Plasma gun, so... I'm going to keep it on the medium setting. But uh, yeah, in System Shock 2, it's really nice because you can just recycle everything into nanites. And I would love to see something like that in this game. I'm not going to go down there yet. That's just... Or no, that's that's it's totally fine there. Lots of secret doors. I think that's ammo, or a first aid kit, I can't remember. Getting supplies from the west wing of medical cost us hands and rains. At this rate, we're dead in hours rather than days. Weeks of loss after loss is taking its toll. We're going to rush the access hall and reach the bridge and take down Showdown. Damn it, now I think I know where the one for the locker is. Just gonna make another save real quick. That's a little bit of a bug. Nice! Blew up his head. Blew up that one too. Yeah, this is... Um, in, I like the look of it in the original. It looks like a Star Trek phaser, but this is cool too. Oh, they totally read it. Yeah, it was a little crop claustrophobic in here. Ah, there we go. Yes, there is a vending machine now. Fantastic. Um, so yeah, if you find coins, you're gonna want to hoard them. Yeah, I didn't play through the whole demo earlier. Really. Just... And again, that makes it feel a little bit more like Bioshock or uh, System Shock too. Um, Oh, I was saying earlier. Oh, I was just mentioning Prey. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally aware that Prey is trying to be System Shock. I think Prey is trying to have more of a feel of System Shock 1 with, with gameplay sort of ripped from System Shock 2. I have a battery, and there's supposed to be a ladder up here, which I think they took out of the game. That's kind of interesting. Take that. Grenades are always nice to know. Should be a monster... Here. Yep. Stop punching me in the face. Nice. It's like popping a watermelon. Shame that the well, I don't think there's anything up there anyways. I don't know about you guys, but I think it's time to drink some soda. I feel that my character is parched.
Okie smokey. You know me guys, I'm gonna start getting real frisky with those saves. I'm avoiding the main chamber, you guys will see why in a bit. Also, oh, damn it. And I knew he was gonna be there, I don't know what I was thinking. There's another thing I've noticed, there is some RNG with your weapon's accuracy. Um, that reticle blooms, it blooms pretty quickly too, so you need to be careful about it. One of the things about the original System Shock is you can never feel comfortable because, like I said, if the if the amount of enemies on the level drops to a certain number, like below three, I think it is, then they spawn like ten more. So it almost behooves you at some point if you can keep track of how many enemies are left to just try and run away from them. Um, but it also means that they respawn them in like completely different locations. So you'll be you'll go through an area you've cleared, be typing in a code, and then they'll just pop up right behind you. There's just grenades in here. I'm almost tempted to do, use a, a different uh, take all button, maybe center mouse. What the hell is that? Like a proximity mouse. Oh, nice. Very nice. I'm hoping that we get to play with some more weapons in this iteration of the game. EMP grenades, gas grenades, okay, great. Uh, I don't need multiple medi patches, so. Let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and use this. And use this. I love inventory systems like this in games. Alright, so we're gonna go back this way. Just hope there's no new foes in here. spend on that but whatever so I never go down to the floor because the first time I ever played system the, all of that st those are like electrified and they'll hurt you so um, there might be cool stuff to see down there but I think that this lift is more to just get you out of trouble should you fall down there here's another puzzle again I think it's randomized um, I figured out the logic I, this one was always kind of bugged me but I think I figured it out um, since one of the colors splits and so it's not a great logic puzzle because the, the colors that they split into, like, these are all primary colors, I believe, right? So if it splits, it doesn't make any sense. Like, watch, I put red in here, goes in here and splits. Red is not a combination of yellow and, and blue. It just isn't, so it's just kind of dumb. But whatever, then it's like, okay, well then I put the yellow one here and then that'll... But then when they recombine them, they're like, oh, you need to know what combinations of colors means. It's kind of a dumb puzzle in my opinion. But whatever, I figured it out. There we go. Creepy friend who's gonna come from this direction. First aid kit. Damn it. 
Come on. Oh, I could shoot out the lights. That's awesome. I had no idea. Look at this. Well, there we go. Look at that. That's awesome. I better switch to something that's not consuming too many, too much ammo. That is so cool. We have that now. Just lit up that bridge. And you can, can you go down here this time? Yeah, you can go down. There's really no point though. Yeah, I knew going down in that little area under the platform is a bad idea. I just didn't know why. Now I know. First aid kit. I think, weren't there supposed to be sodas in here? Yes. So I did, like I said, guys, full disclosure, I did play a little bit of this earlier. Alright, and let's get another audio log. That was easy. No, come back! Damn it. I bet he had ammo. I don't think all of the audio logs are changed. I mean, they all, they all are different voice actors. Um, I don't think the dialogue for all of them has changed. This guy's meant to scare you. I am loving this pistol. I would like some more batteries though, so I can use my Star Trek phaser. Okay guys, let's... come on. Dude, he threw down a proximity mine. I'm gonna get the hell away from there. That's awesome. Definitely makes them uh, more uh, formidable. Yeah, because you can. I can interact with stuff from afar, so I'm, I'm controlling things with my mind, which is cool. I'm gonna switch to this because I have a little bit of energy. I'm not going in there. That's the kill zone. That, there's like a million monsters out there. Right. I see you over there. Oh damn it! I see your buddy too. So, yeah, load times suck in this game right now. They're really bad. I'm standing by. Really? I have to go through two loading times? Oh, that's just criminal. Oh my god, that's just awful. Oh, come on, dude. 
that's just evil. Again, I, I think this is largely the demo. I don't, I can't imagine that the retail game is going to ship like this. But why allow you to save but not allow you to... There we go. There, at least I can loot his body now. And he had a battery. Good. So you know what? I'm actually going to... What am I doing? Press tab. Nah, I'm not going to use both batteries. I'm going to conserve one. And I'm also going to... Because I know he's right down there. That's not where I want that to go. Those grenades are just a, just a little bit too bouncy. And I just wasted a bunch of... Yeah, they're a little bit hard to, uh, to aim. Ah! Get the shit out of me, bro. And that, that's the thing, that's how easily startled I am. I knew he was coming and that's why I was throwing grenades at him. I'm gonna use a gun for this guy. Seriously? Okay, this guy is... I mean, you gotta load like immediately as you're dying. You cannot let yourself go through that screen. By the way, this didn't happen to me before. I think I sniped him before he was able to get to... I don't know if that's going to do anything. I guess he was a biological. fall for that shit again. Where the hell is it? I am gonna fall for it again, aren't I, guys? Alright, let's go ahead and save. Uh, yeah, again, you know, the, the original game was a lot like this. It's extremely tense until you find those, you need those conversion chambers. Where is it? it did it clip through the... Uh, my, well, it clipped through the floor. That's fantastic. What is that it? You, sir. You suck for throwing that at me. I was like, I could have sworn, yeah, there's a coin. So that's the coin, see? And you can use that at the, and I'm gonna save them because I'm sure it's a little fun developer Easter egg or whatever. And I'm also gonna use one of my batteries now and switch over to my spark beam and I'm gonna save again because I'm telling you guys, the combat's no joke in this one. For the life of me, I cannot get these grenades to work. Shit. Alright guys, let's go. Come on! Come on, buddy. Alright, I did get that grenade to work. I took out all of his pals. Fantastic. Alright, that, that was great. Once again, I think we are saving. Till we hit that reclamation chamber. Well, even when we do, it's, it's not like the... 
it's not still interminably long load times. Which again, I have every faith that uh, Night Dive will fix those. Because there's, there's fucking dudes down there, and I know they're gonna hear it. Is there anything in the bathroom? Here? No, there's not. Let's get in here real quick. Let's take care of Mr. Feisty. And wait, sorry. Boom goes the dynamite. Standard station restoration procedures online. Boom goes the dynamite. Now I can just wantonly kill everything. Well, actually, I won't use a Berserker Stim, because that's a waste of resources. What I will do is go in here and just bash the living shit out of every one of these guys. Hit your buddy. Try and shoot through your buddy. Get some damage done. That is a lot more dudes than I remember. Was, uh, that was violent as hell. I approve. Let's go ahead and grab one of these. Yeah, I think when I play this, uh, like the, re the retail release, shut up. Directive to Cyborg F-71. Move mutagen experiment V-5 to, to, to Beta Grove on the executive level. Let the virus loose in the grove and uh, observe its effects on, on flora and fauna. Collect samples from the mutated. Kill those who have not shown progress. And, and we will soon have a perfected strain that will consume the earth, allowing me to reshape the in insect, the insects in my perfect image. I'm gonna try a little immersive sim problem solving here. I'm gonna pick up this stupid thing. You bastard. I see you there! You're the guy throwing all those bombs. You are not welcomed here. Remove yourself. But I killed him already. I'll, get, I'll show you guys the uh, overcharge on this. Does a decent amount of damage. You can switch ammo types. Uh, I don't know if the pistol has tons of ammo types, but uh, see what I'm saying? This is much more of a like actiony survival horror sort of thing going on here. Oh, I wanted to blow up his head. And you can kill them too and take their stuff, but they typically don't have any stuff. Um, You know, and with the addition of the proximity bombs, that's... Little things like that. That can totally make this a much more difficult experience overall. I didn't even check uh, what our progress is. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and save again. 
and we're gonna try a little immersive sim. Actually, you know what we can do? There's two ways. We I'm gonna try one thing first because I think it's pretty clever. We're gonna reload the save if it doesn't work. Come here, buddy. So this is the next thing we're gonna try. We're gonna see if he wants to come up here. So we killed that guy, and then we can snipe his friend. So that that's that's great. You can sort of lure him towards the proximity mine that the, his his buddies laid down. That's awesome. All right, let's go ahead and save again because that worked out. I my the one thing I was trying to do is uh, throw junk from my inventory at it to get it to. Uh, to pop off, but that didn't really work. Yeah, I couldn't hear the soundtrack very well before because I wasn't playing with headphones. I had the volume very low. It was just, again, I was just trying to check out the layout and stuff. This is a little too reminiscent of Prey's soundtrack. You know? And I just know that when this comes out, if it if it gains any sort of popularity at all, there's gonna be people playing it going like, it's just a ripoff of Prey. I just know how that, that's how it's gonna be. Forty-eight percent. Okay. That sounds pretty good, actually. gonna go liberate another portion of this deck. I'm actually gonna... Come on, you vile cretins, let's go. Oh, damn it! Man, those guys are no joke. They were not this tough in the, uh... See what I'm talking about with these load times? It's just ridiculous. I just want to respawn, please. I've got to use ranged weapons with him. So, typically that area is full of, uh, mutants. Like, look how long... This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. a ranged weapon against him. I cannot. Jeez, look at his... God damn, dude. Is this the room with all the... Connected. Of course it runs out right when I need it. Yeah, this game is definitely going to be a little bit, uh, that's what I'm saying, guys, you know, I, I wasn't joking when I was like, I'm, I'm kind of maybe considering turning this down to, uh, a number one on combat, because they definitely didn't want it to, I'm not saying the first one's easy, or the original is easy, but, uh, it's definitely not this difficult, let's put it that way. This auto self destruct. Yeah. So I can't pick up that rifle yet. 
which I would absolutely love to. I'm tired of dealing with those guys. Oh, and those guys were not anywhere. They could run around, I think. They could run around, but they weren't anywhere near as difficult in the first game. In the original, not the first game. I have to keep reminding myself. Okay, so the top floor is pretty much all cleared out. That's good. And you kind of have to rely on those reclamation chambers, honestly, especially on the higher difficulties, but the problem, like I said, is that load time is just atrocious. Honestly, the reloading the save is um, pretty quick, I've noticed, so it's, it's almost better to just reload the save as you die rather than try and reload the damn chamber. Um, I don't know if that's a penalty they thought would be a great sort of deterrent from just using the chambers as a crutch. Um, but I have to say that I think it's sort of a mistake. See, this is what I was talking about. So this weapon is actually okay to use, right? But I don't need more, so I can empty the weapon, take the ammo, and then just drop it out of my inventory, which is cool. You know, you can take and strip the ammo, off of it, but you have to do it manually. It's not just going to do it for you. Hey, 44%. Very nice. I feel like there's I missed something. There's an area I missed for sure. I think. Uh, yeah, I, I know what it is. So we're gonna go back up here and we're gonna take care of it right now. Oh, maybe not. Hmm. Well then where the hell was that place? There's a place with, uh, like, shields. Oh, I know where it is. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna go back there. Right now. Oh, so that's what the stamina thing is good for. Yeah, you actually, you run out of breath pretty fast. I think the heavy attack needs to do more damage. Um, that's another thing that I would say. Really criticism. I don't seem to notice much difference in how much damage the, the heavy attack does. 40% good. Um, so I would say, yeah, I'd like to see the heavy attack do more damage. Because all the, all, how vulnerable you make yourself, and I kind of generally have this opinion of heavy attacks in most video games. Um, the vulnerability trade-off is uh, typically not worth it. It's better to keep the enemy on their toes with fast attacks and sometimes stun lock them than it is to try and uh, uh, get in that extra damage. Because it's usually, like I said, in my experience in games, not, not really worth it. Is there, yeah. So there's a, a safe way to descend this lift. You do that, and then you can go over here. So you don't have to take fall damage. kind of interesting, the longer you hold down the, the grenade throw button, the farther it will go, which is kind of neat. 
Also, those things do a ton of damage if they blow up near you. So that's why I was doing that. Who are you? The computer nodes can be repaired, but you... Who are, are you? My, my, my cameras and sensors scan your body. But you do not... But, but, but you do not match any employee file. When my cyborgs bring you to an electrified interrogation bench, I will have your secrets. And you, and, and you will learn more about pain than you ever wanted to know. Well, that's nice. Um... I also think I can't tell. I, did they get Shodan to redo her voice lines? Or I mean Terry Brocious? Did they hit bring her back on to do more voiceover? I'm just gonna recharge fully. I'm gonna go ahead and save again. <clears throat> because the sound quality on them is amazing, and some of some of them don't have the timing and cadence that the original voice lines had, so. to sanitizing my station of the hu hu human of the human stain once the tachyon mining beam is calibrated we will begin to pu purify the human cities of earth my first step towards cleansing the planet and allowing our purity, 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 purity. Our, our purity to flourish is almost complete their rotting corpses will provide the food for my my world to grow and prosper. Yeah, I can't tell if they just got some really high quality lossless uh, recordings from the original. Like I said, some of them just don't sound right compared to how they used to in the original. So, uh, and I know that. Terry Brocious has no problem coming back and re-recording stuff for things like this, so it's possible. I, I mean, I know she's... I don't even know if System Th Shock 3 is still in development, but when it when it was for sure in development, she was signed on to to redo Shodan. So, uh, I don't think it would be hard to come and get her in to, to record new voice lines, but I don't know. I just can't tell. Judging by how much of the audio they have replaced... I would say it's more likely that they, they called her up and said, hey, stop moving around, stop, stop shuffling to and fro, to and fro, sorry, I'm in the, in the heat of battle here, there we go, that one's taken out. You know what, I'm going to use a gas grenade. That worked very well. Look at that. The thing I love about immersive sims is you're just like, oh my god, it's so difficult. And then you just start making sure you use the system. I mean, I know that's a thing in every game, like just throwing a grenade, but you know, it's just... Typically how I play this, I don't use stuff like that, but the game really does have those systems for a reason. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these guys are dead. Yeah, so that's not a, that's not a knockout gas. 
but it just works better against organic targets, you know, than like an EMP grenade. And it, you know, frags are just kind of universally useful. So if I didn't want to waste a frag doing that, I always have the option I just used. Stop repopulating the world. Here. Yeah, I just, you know, you always got to watch your back because sometimes they they just randomly repopulate because that's that's one of the doors we came in from Okay Yeah, this is where we started our whole adventure All right, so Go ahead and save yeah, I'm just gonna clear out the level get us down to zero security I don't think you have to to progress. I think you just like. Gotta make those shots count, people. I am not so good at the aiming most of the time. Oh. I was getting a lot better. I've been playing a lot of Hunt Showdown, which I would like to do a review on soon. And I may, actually, this weekend. That would be a fun little side project to get done. Um. But yeah, I, I've been playing a lot of that. I was getting much better at my aiming in games. Because you kind of have to be in that game. I've led a small group of survivors across the radioactive trench in Beta Quadrant and to the operation space that Abe mentioned. Being the highest ranking manager present, I sent Keith and his group to look for supplies. Darcy is working on a plan to disable the mining laser from his office on research. No updates from him yet. We're safe here. Okay, I'm pretty sure that was the original one. Maybe I just completely forgot the... But no, she starts it. She's like, my name is Rebecca Lansing and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Maybe I'm just so used to, again, the cadence of the speech of the original voice actor that I'm like, I didn't recognize that first audio log. Most of the rest have sounded like how I remember them, but I can't know for sure. Okay. Let's hope they didn't just bring in a whole new... Mess of mutants. It's definitely one of those games that you're better off playing more thoughtfully and methodically rather than just kind of rushing in. Yeah, there's a thirsty boy down here. What? Oh, I killed him with the gas grenade. Cool. What the hell did I just pick up? I have no idea. But I've got quite a few uh, rounds for my pistol, so I don't need to, to use this necessarily. In fact, I'm going to switch over. I'm running out of energy. How many sodas do I have? Go. Use that. To be honest, it feels, you know, with the updated control scheme and how fluid it is and, like, playing with all the different, you know, patches and stuff, like, even on the original... To get to some of this stuff, you'd have to go through a bunch of different, um, get all the soft- Oh yeah, this is- this shows all your software you have installed on your, uh, interface. Um, I didn't use patches and stuff like that a ton of the time, it was kind of a pain in the ass to use, but this feels a little bit more like Deus Ex, even, actually. Which is not a bad thing. I don't know why I'm saving. They are horrifying enough that when they come around the corner like that and you're, you kind of catch off guard, it is a little terrifying. If you are hearing this, we have set up an operations base to assist in resisting Shodan. Come to Beta Quadrant and you will find the medical research vaults have been turned into a radioactive trench. You can bypass this trench via the force bridge that operates off a nearby wiring panel. Any humans that can hear my voice Come to Beta Quadrant and make a stand against Shodan. I was about to say, it looks like a key card. What is this? Magnetic pulse cartridges. Uh, yes, please. 
what is this? We'll move some find out. Medical storage room doors in Delta are locked in cyberspace. Reminder to myself to destroy the cyber core to unlock the doors. Okay, so I guess we're gonna try out cyberspace now. Let's go ahead and save before we do it. I don't know what I don't know how cyberspace could either be just as easy or insanely difficult in this new rendition of the game. So we're gonna save before we do it. I don't really know, because I don't wanna have to necessarily reload. So let's give cyberspace a try. Let's see what they're I saw a demo that they have published. Let's play the big game. Okay, that's pretty cool. So yeah, this is how largely how it worked in the original. Uh, it wasn't as detailed looking, and there usually weren't cross members to structures. These were all just kind of empty voids, typically. Um, and you could pick up health, but also you could pick up software to make your attacks more effective. Um, so let's see, I've gotta go, oh. Follow this red line of imagination. Okay. So, yeah, this is your sort of virtual hacking interface. I'm, I'm in cyberspace in the computer with my hacking. And there's time. I think there was time limits in the original. I think they were pretty liberal though. Like almost to the point of like not even being necessary. Unlock the armory. I think I can go through here and take. Uh, I don't know how to get out of cyberspace. That's kind of weird. Okay, at least they kept some of the, the theme from cyberspace in this one. I guess through here? idea what the hell I'm supposed to be doing right now. Showdown detection. Okay, 
how do I exit? I feel like in the original it just you just exited. Like you just as soon as you got to the thing you needed to, you were done. I don't remember all of this. Oh, you know what? That's probably it. So I got about 30 seconds to get over there. There we go. I think that's the exit. It definitely looks like an exit. Well, excuse me while I have a seizure real quick. Okay. Wow. Um... I mean, if you have to put the cyberspace component of the original System Shock into a remake, that's not a bad way to do it, and it honestly is pretty faithful to the original. Um, but yeah, that that intro and outro are pretty seizure-inducing, I gotta say. Nice. Press T to pump up to three rounds into the chamber, effective against robots. I'm going to go ahead and put this at... Okay, so I got three rounds in this thing now, but I'm going to be dealing with mostly the other ones. So when I get to the... When I get to a robot, I'll try and use that cannon. Looks like this guy's trying to wake up. <laughs> now those are cyborgs, does that count? I guess not. What a weird gun. I suppose it's super effective against robots. These are these are part organic life, so probably not the best target to be going up against. What a weird gun. was pretty effective, I guess. I know they're going to repopulate that with some scumbag, so... Pretty effective. I remember trying to take those guys out the last time I played this. It was a big pain in the ass. Also, making this, I wondered how they were gonna make. Cause in the original, they were like uh, these laser cannons on uh, on like tripods, and they would literally just hop around. It was the most ridiculous looking thing ever. And I was like, how are they gonna put that into the game without it being completely dumb? I actually don't mind respawning enemies if you can uh, eliminate that possibility by taking out. I knew they were gonna do this. Yeah, if you can just eliminate the possibility of enemies respawning by taking the security down to zero, then I'm okay with it actually. Sorry, I, th I thought I heard another one. 
In his death throes, I thought it was another one of his buddies. Take all. Okay. We are looking pretty good right now. Like I said, you can use the coins on this That's machine, right but I'm not going to do that. Because I'm almost positive that there's going to be like, you know, the BFG 9000 hidden in one of those machines later in the game. And you can only get it if you have like all five coins or whatever. Something like that. Or a recycler, like in System Shock 2. Uh, I think you have to save up quite a bit or find like a bunch of special items to get it. And you definitely don't want to be like, ah, I spent all those on a health kit. Damn it. I don't know what to press there, but... That's probably more effective against these guys anyways. I don't like that that thing keeps making... moving around and stuff. It's bothering me. Okay, so that's fine. Now that is a security turret, I would like to be able to turn that to my ally, but I don't know if that's possible. I don't remember. Broken beyond repair. Okay. Nice. Pistol. We're going to empty and drop it. We don't need that. And we don't need a stethoscope either. Where is it? Uh, offload your junk on me. This isn't a yard sale. I like all the depth of like, yeah, you have to manage all these little things and you can use food to heal and you know, you've got, you know, uh, real inventory management. That's another part of this game is your build is going to be determined by what you actually want to keep in your inventory. What weapons are working well for your particular playstyle. I think there's even a lightsaber in this game uh, that you pick up. I mean, there is in the original. So, you know, if you want to stick to melee more, you can do that. Uh, but there's definitely a whole host of web, but you can't carry all the weapons at once. So there is a sort of a build of sorts uh, that you can develop. You know, and if you're not using melee, maybe you don't use combat stim boosters and stuff. This facility or this part of the station is pretty much ours. Oh, I spoke too soon. Damn it. Blimey. That's what I'm talking about. Like, it's just like I'm at zero security. Leave me alone.
Damn. They just my shit up, didn't they? Now, am I gonna get shot at if I come here? Well, I can't open this, but I know how I can. I can go down here and, and take care of it. Let's just restock on energy though. You do get an energy shield later in the game. Man, I'm thinking about some of the stuff, at least if they keep it consistent with the other game that you're gonna have to do in this game with the newer AI and slicker controls, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. I wish they had let you try out one of the assault rifles in this. Now it's not over yet. I mean, what the hell? I think there's a light source broken up there. Yeah. Stop sliding. Oh my god. Is this really how this is gonna be? Stop moving. is awful. What in the... Dude. Dude, stop. Oh my god. They have got to fix this. This is ridiculous. Yeah, I'm, you've got to be able to do rewire the thing here. I don't even think the puzzle works right. There we go. sinking. <laughs> I'm sinking. Oh god. Uh, yeah, please night dive. Please fix this. This is... Uh, what the... Just, just have it be an invisible platform. Even if it's just for this one... Just this one time. Now it seems to work. Oh no, I'm still like hovering. So, now we can access that one area. I just don't know how many areas have been repopulated by goons. But we'll see. So let's go over here. Let's do a little save real quick, because that was a pain in the ass. Yeah, so, yeah, no, not everything. It's oh my goodness! talking about with the accuracy there you do have to kind of worry about it in this game it's a little bit crazy kind of I think I'm just gonna use two of these uh, like I said using those damn reclamation chambers is such a pain in the ass is 
Is that everybody? Are we all good? Okay. Let's hi-ho silver away over here. I mean, if I was playing the game, like the actual game game, I, I would probably just... And hopefully they got those load times for the Reclamation Chamber down. I, I don't think I would be uh, that concerned with, you know, once I got it online or whatever else I'm doing. There is one thing we forgot to do in here. Which is a bit of a spoiler, so just if you don't want to know, just avert your eyes for a few seconds over here. Or just skip ahead, I don't know, a couple of seconds. So you see this? Um, I'm not going to explain why, but this is important. Every time you blow up one of these, this is important. So just keep that in mind when you play. That's pretty much everything we needed to do down here. That is some beautiful light. But again, Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine's just really good at lighting. If any of you guys are programmers, maybe you can uh, clear something up for me. I have, a, I have a friend, he does work with, with code and stuff like that. He's just like, oh no, it doesn't matter what engine you're using. You can get him to do all the same stuff. It just matters how good you are at coding, which I suppose is probably not untrue. gotta be, I mean, this is no joke, man. You gotta be, you gotta be on your fucking toes here. I mean, that's a good thing, though. And I, I don't think that they just... Oh, I didn't really need any energy on it. Map, Let's see status, laser charging, life pause disabled, shield reactor offline, activated online, jettison, CPU nodes, medical, media, software. Okay, so it doesn't actually give us like an objective. Um, not that I don't know what to do, I'm just curious like how the game works and uh, when you actually play it. Oh, there's one thing we didn't check out. Let's go back this way. There's a little blocked door we didn't get to, ch to explore. But again, I don't know if she just repopulated some of these areas because she's pissed because we took security offline, or if, if it's just part of the general constant respawning of enemies. You know, I'm, I'm just unsure at this point. If you guys recall, because I don't think I've ever, even in the system the original system shock one I don't think I've ever come back here to check out this locked door that says there's too much security okay I think we can go now yep, open it up yeah I don't think I've ever been in here so they took away there's a there's a upstairs like a ladder there's a maintenance ladder in one of the main halls so they've, they've kind of made it different it's a lot less claustrophobic though which is a good thing Ooh, what the hell is that oh nice what is this? Heavy slug rounds. Yes, please. Now I kind of want there to be more monsters to kill. Oh, man. Alright, well, we'll go see if there's anybody who wants to die. Let's read up on this pistol first. What the hell is this? This is the Magnum 2100 pistol. Uh, damage type kinetic, damage 60, versus this one is 20. Armor penetration is 10%, 30%. Damn. And we have standard 9mm rounds. We don't have any other ammo types as far as I can tell. And they I haven't seen the dart gun in the game yet. There's a there's a dart gun in the original game. Um, 
that's good against organics. Uh, I assumed it put them to sleep and I'd have to deal with them again later, which is why I never used it, but I, I, it's, I think it's a lethal, it's a lethal gun. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this uh, instead of frags. I'm probably not gonna need any more frags from here now. So there's no threats to deal with, the levels aren't actually super large, but you don't want to get, I mean, as you've seen, you don't want to get caught with your pants down in this game. Oh. Damn it, I was trying to avoid that. Fatigue level's high. So yeah, if you want to sprint around a lot, or if you're trying to run away from enemies, you might need to use those uh, stim boosters. Stamina boosters. Now there's supposed to be one of these rooms is supposed to have like a shitload of uh, zombies in it or mutants. I think they're mutants. But functionally, basically indistinguishable from zombies. Well, we're gonna take the elevator down. I just want to find one more mutant or someone to shoot with this thing. Come on, guys. Maybe we'll go down this way. Nope, all dead still. Okay. I know I was bitching about uh, constantly respawning enemies, and, and I do not mean this to say that I want them to be put in the game. I'm just saying, at this ironic and sort of non sequitur uh, sort of period of time, I I do I would like uh, I would like some respawning enemies just to practice with this gun that I totally forgot about until I turned security off. One more zombie. Nothing. Well, then I will leave it to you guys when you play a uh, System Shock remake demo to pick this up as soon as possible so you can uh, practice with it. Now, there's one other area where they might let me use it. I don't know how far the demo goes. It said medical. It said medical demo, so I don't know how far it goes beyond that. Well, I think we're going to probably end the demo. Well, you know what? I think I left this guy alive, didn't I? I did. Hey, what's up, buddy? Bam! That was pretty satisfying. It, does it do... Hold on. This does... 60... And this does 20, so it's three times the damage of the normal pistol, holds more ammo. What does this do? 45, but it's magnetic damage. That, I mean, I probably would have used that one on that big robot guarding the computer nodes. Um, had we taken a different route out of here. Let's go ahead and save again right before our conclusion of this little adventure. I don't know if the demo, yeah. Look at you, hacker. What about you and your friend Diego? A, a pathetic creature of, uh, of meat and bone. Panting. 
shaking and sweating as you run through my co as you run through my corridors. Is that Diego? I think um, so that was it, it is fucking awesome and I like a lot of the little changes that they've made I like the changes to the layout I like that we've got an experiment with uh, different weapons and, and there's new things added I, I don't I think they said this is the last official demo until the game releases I don't know yet though um, but I think it's a great taste of what the game has, and it's, you know, like you said, the game is no joke. I mean, it's it's actually not super easy. Um, I'm hoping you can adjust the difficulty once you've started a game. I, I didn't check the settings. I, I'll probably go back and do that. Um, but I don't know for sure if you can. That would be ideally a good thing. But, yeah, like I said, a lot of the little nitpicks I had were just basically suggestions if night dive ever catches wind of this or people connected to night dive so that people can say like yeah it's pretty much perfect just these little sort of tweaks will make it better i do hope that there's a classic mode that lets you play with some of the original soundtrack and stuff like that although some of the soundtrack i've noticed like cyberspace and a few others has uh, motifs from the original game in it um i don't think it was a terrible idea to redo some of the the audio logs um but there's certain aspects of the original that would be nice to sort of preserve in this one. But yeah, I had a blast. I thought it was great, and I can't wait. Plus, uh, the inclusion for free of System Shock 2 Enhanced Edition with the pre-order. I mean, I'm just going to pre-order it. I, I just got to make... I, I got to take a look at the finances this week and see, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to be pretty pre-ordering it within the next week or two. Um, because it just it looks awesome. And uh, basically, it's everything that I would want it to be. Everything that I wanted a, a System Shock 1 remake to be. Um, and, you know, especially coming from at the time when I think they first announced this, I hadn't played the original System Shock, and I was like, oh, I'll just wait for this to come out. Well, that was years ago. And I'm glad that at that point I did finally sit down and say, like, We're gonna, I'm going to play the original System Shock because uh, there's Mouse Look on Enhanced. I would also recommend you guys pick that up. Go check it out. It's usually on Steam. It's pretty cheap. Uh, it goes on sale all the time. And, uh, yeah, play it, because uh, I think this game is not only great for revitalizing system, the original System Shock within the general consciousness and getting people sort of um, exposed to how influential this game was and, and how awesome it could be, but I think also there's an added bit of fun if you've played the original to comparing, like, okay, this is what they changed, this is how they interpreted this. So, I mean, if you're already sort of... Uh, if you're already thinking this is pretty cool or you're a huge fan of System Shock 2 and you never played System Shock 1, go ahead and play it. Enhanced Edition is eminently playable, um, and it's it's really fun. It's a, it's a rip-roaring good time, as they say. So, yeah, check it out. Um, and, uh, I, you know, here's another thing. It, this sort of... Um, This sort of proves uh, the point that Warren Spector was making about why System Shock 1 was so influential. And he said basically, if you updated the control scheme and elements of the UI and the graphics, uh, System Shock 2 would be, it would still feel like an incredibly modern game with a lot of, you know, it would be play, it would be it would be totally playable today and that's essentially you know again as coming from someone who's played the original multiple times now um, yeah I can I can wholeheartedly agree with that because that's essentially what they've done here is just take you know it it at its core it still feels like system shock um, they've just updated enough to make it playable for modern audiences but ultimately the the core of the game is still there so um, Anyways, uh, thank you guys for checking out this game with me.
Um, and thank you for checking out this Let's Play, and uh, I hope that you guys will be supporting Night Dive Studios and, uh, you know, checking out the other projects that they're working on, System Shock 2 Enhanced Edition. Um, and, uh, yeah, keep your eye on the channel for more System Shock news, especially System Shock 3. Hopefully we hear something about it. We're going on a year since we heard something about it last, and I would love to know. Um, but yeah, thanks for checking me out, and that's about it for me.